a very warm welcome and good morning, everyone. Um, great to have you attending our late summer, early morning fireside chat. And it's about a hot topic for sure. Uh, my name is Jan Tyson, and I will be the moderator for this event today. And um, I'm sure that you all have suffered from current developments. And I'm happy uh, to have two highly skilled, highly recognized experts with me today. Uh, that might provide you with some strategies, insights, and even more important, practical approaches, how to build a robust supply chain risk management and effectively mitigate risk. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, welcome Heiko Schwartz. Uh, he's already here with me. Heiko is the founder and CEO of Risk Methods, and he's responsible for sales, marketing, and customer success management. Uh, Heiko is, I guess, a veteran in the procurement uh, space. Uh, he has worked in the software business for almost 20 years in various areas of strategic procurement, marketing, and supply chain uh, uh, companies and topics. And with his expertise in procurement and supply chain management, risk, and digital transformation, Heiko has successfully helped supply chain and procurement organizations to implement solutions, increasing performance, reduce cost, and minimize risk. Before he started Risk Methods a few years ago, he was a sales director at IBM and Taurus. I'm sure some of you have heard about that company as well. And he was responsible for global sales and transfer of know-how from the supply management product line. Heiko, with his partners, founded uh, Risk Methods in 2013, and they are focusing on delivering an innovative SaaS software as a solution service to comprehensively manage supply chain risk management. And with us in a few seconds, hopefully, will also be Sam DeFreitz. Sam is Global VP uh, Commercial at Mars. I'm sure you all know Mars very well, very well-known product. And Sam leads the performance and capabilities and service team at Mars, driving procurement transformation and propelling more than 1,300 associates across the enterprise. Uh, also, Sam is a veteran in the procurement space. Uh, he was a member of the procurement leadership team at GlaxoSmithKline, where he led the procurement performance and systems team and delivered significant business results uh, through global systems deployments and performance management. He started his career in, as a management consultant at AT Kearney and led a category team at Barclay Card, where he, and he was the head of procurement at the home retail group. So that's a little bit uh, the discussion that we have today uh, with Sam as well as with Heiko. And the first question to you, Heiko, I mean, you're in the space now for many, many years and uh, you have spent quite some time on risk management now. Why is it more important than ever that we as procurement professionals uh, take care of supply chain risk management, supply based risk these days? Um, thanks for the introduction, Jan, and good morning to everyone. Um, great question. So I think we as procurement professionals, we do have the responsibility to contribute to the success of our um, organizations, also a side of savings. And risk management as such is an ideal opportunity to prove value a side of savings um, to allow our organizations to um, become more um, competitive and to protect the top line, bottom line results as well as the reputation. And um, the reason why supply chain risk management as such is even more of a pressing um, issue today. I mean, there are so many impressions that we as procurement professionals faced over the course of the last 12 months that forced us to drive better understanding of the uh, exposure of our supply networks. Disruptions by COVID-19, like Q2 last year, more than 50,000 manufacturing sites just within China were affected by incidents and lockdown scenarios. Semiconductor shortages. BMW, the car manufacturer, is going to lose 90,000 cars until end of this year. And it's one of the OEMs that is affected the least. Um, climate change related natural hazards. Um, I, I just did read a an, research paper from, from the Munich Reinsurance, which stated that across the last 100 plus years, 19 of the warmest 20 years 
were in the period from 2002 to 2020. And like 68% of the really devastating natural hazards that hit the world in 2020, they were clearly related to climate change. And last but not least, aside of all the, the items that relate to physical disruptions of supply networks and, and struggle the operations of also non-manufacturing suppliers, which is same as important for, for the performance of companies, um, result of the, the regulatory pressure that we see in regards of human rights, that we see also pressure from consumers and also business customers that want to buy more sustainable. And we got to orchestrate our supply networks to, to comply with those expectations from, from our customer audience and to make also um, contribute to, to a better planet as such. Yeah. So what else do you need to trigger a project and to take care of this discipline? Yeah. Mm. Heiko, you were just talking about customer customer expectations, and I think that's a perfect way to get Sam involved here now, uh, working for Mars. Um, Sam, we were just talking a bit about why it is more important than ever to, to take care of supply chain risk. What's your opinion on that? Um, yeah, good morning. Sorry about the slight delay getting me in there. So yeah, great to meet you. Just to introduce myself, I, I work in a, at Mars. I'm a one of our um, I lead our what, performance capability and service team, team. We work around across all of our business segments, all of our all of our regions. About 180 associates in my organisation who propel about another thousand associates in procurement at Mars. So big and complex, and and that's why you know when we talk about risk, I think it's a really simple answer for you. Um, and that is just look outside your door, right? The world that we live in, the world that we work in is, is extremely interconnected, right? I don't think um, of um, ever, yeah, I can't think of a time before where it's been so more important now to think about the risk aspects of our business. Um, yeah, very few supply chains are immune to some of these impacts, you know, whether that's a physical, but actually more importantly, as, as we've become increasingly digital, and actually, as we've seen the last few years, you know, the legal, regulatory and political environments are constantly shifting and those things are making things a lot more dynamic for us to deal with. You know, from a physical level, we know about Suez Canal, right? That's, you know, one in 10 ships around the world, you know, getting clogged up in, in that incident last year, you know, costing $10 billion a day. But just think about the political environmental, uh, sorry, economic environment. We had this black swan event in the UK, right? A perfect combination of a pandemic, a Brexit and, you know, shoe shifting demands of our consumers causing 100,000 you know, drivers to be sh you know, short in the UK. Uh, not to make them short, sorry, a shortage of 100,000 truck drivers. Um, and I, I really wish we could have thought about this scenario last year, right? Just think ahead, what, you know, what, what if we could have done about that if we'd thought about that, that perfect storm. Cybersecurity, right? We think about IT vendors being, you know, uh, needing to be protected from, from these events, but actually we've got suppliers, shipping companies, right? Having their website shut down because of cyber attacks. Just the other week, we had a, a jars manufacturer in Ireland, right, had their operations interrupted because of a cyber attack. Nothing physical there. Couldn't have predicted it, right? And so these things are hugely important. And lastly, you know, things like food safety. We've detected issues, right, from five years ago in a remote part of the world that only now is starting to show up in our European supply chains. And I think, you know, why is it important to take it seriously? Well, these signals are out there. We just got to pick up on them early on. Think about these scenarios and 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 uh, get ahead right of, of it. And it's not just to get ahead of competition; it's to get ahead of our, you know, help our consumers as well. I think that's a fantastic assessment of the current situation. And I have to add, I'm spending now 25 years in procurement, and for me, this is probably the the year where I see the biggest challenges for all of us. I think we all can learn from it, and we all have to deal with it. But now that we have lots of procurement people here in the room as well, uh, they never leave a room without having solutions. So Sam, what what uh, have you done? What has Mars done in terms of risk management to m prevent risk, but also to mitigate risks? Yeah, I mean, the first thing is you keep on top of what you know, we've always been doing, right? So segment the risk, think about our risk management plans. Um, you know, in the last you know, couple of years, we've had to really sharpen that up. Um, mm. We've had to take care of our most vulnerable suppliers and also really identify those critical suppliers that we can we can sort of support doing things like reducing payment terms right giving them better visibility of what our uh, our business is doing so they can plan better but also we've had to fast track some of our sourcing strategies right 
where we're single source, let's dual source, let's qualify vendors more rapidly. So that's your classic thing. But I think we've had to really sharpen that and accelerate a few, few, few things there. The second thing is, is actually been more of an interesting journey, right? We're actually partnering with risk methods as well on this is just getting our hands on information, right? Information here is key, right? No matter how, you know, fainted it might, the, those signals might be, we've got to get a hold of it. And there's internal data. So looking at tons of quality information that we have internally, just to see, you know, are there deviations in our quality, no matter how small that might be a signal, there's an issue in our supply chain. But looking externally, right? And this is where the big data comes in. You know, anybody can set up a Google alert, but how do you do that with 50,000 suppliers, right? How do you do that? How do you map 50,000 vendors to your 150 sites and then understand really what is the impact when, when something pops up? Put it in the right risk category, understand very, very quickly how important it is, um, and then actually take some action. Um, so we did two things um, in that space, you know, working with risk methods. We first did a, what I call a play with it phase, and then we did a scale it phase, and that's where we're now. But during that play with it phase, we, we put in about 60 risk outs, one per category, per segment, per region, and we gave them the tool. Right, chuck your data in, let's start learning about how this, you know, this listening technology can help us um, amplify the noise out there and zoom in on, on, the, on, the, on the risks. So that took about six weeks, um, or six months even. And then we're now in the scale it phase and we've done two new things. First, we've put not just 60 users, we've put hundreds of users on the platform. And two, we've sorted out our data. I think and we we'll, might talk about it later, but getting that data sharp, getting it clean is, is so important because you get a lot of noise when you, when you start you know, listening for risks out in your supply chain. Um, and the outcome of all this, um, well, there's a lot of stories. Uh, but, you know, having the, the, the scouts meeting every other week, we were able to kind of just learn together, but also share those success stories and learn how to listen to a potential risk and think about the, the impact it might have on our business. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we learned is there's not as much noise as you think. You don't just immediately have this dashboard with red flickering lights. You don't immediately start clicking on buttons and saving the world. What you have to do is start thinking, how do I tune it to the suppliers that I care about most? Mm -hmm. And then think about the five or six steps down the line from a risk, not when, you know, when the site's on fire, it's too late. And so we've done a lot around trying to um, tune up the machine and then think about the data. The other thing we've done is take a big step back. So, you know, how's our supply chain compared to our competitors? You know, what is it? What do all the signals really mean? And I've got a, a printout, so I'm not going to be digital, but this is, you know, at the end of the program, we started plotting, you know, for all of our suppliers, what are the major alerts that we're seeing? The top three was ownership structure. This is big, right? When businesses start divesting, start buying, right organizations merging they're focusing their business they pull out of markets they pull out of se sectors and that has actually mean that we've had to think seriously about some of, uh, of our supply chain and that could be you know shifting suppliers or securing supply but also it's had meant we have to think about um, some of the business relationships right when we have a competitor buying one of our suppliers you've got to think about the the nature of your relationship your, your ndas you already have signed and so forth mm -hmm. Second big one um, was actually uh, fines and penalties. Big surprise for me. I didn't realize that we had suppliers that are out in the press for, um, for fixing prices, right? And being, and being reported for that, paying fines, right? Do we really want to work with suppliers who don't know how to keep their books tidy? So we've, uh, that was the second biggest one. And then lastly, just revenue uh, outlooks. We've had uh, Nielsen, for example, lay off three and a half thousand staff. Tata, you know, cutting uh, the senior manager's pay. That's a signal that very, you know, something's happening and we need to make sure that the you know, organization is positioned correct to make sure we're, we're supported. So, yeah, that step back, you know, takes us out of the, the wildfires and the, you know, the issues at hand, but also makes us think about, um, you know, the principles in our supply base and, and how we look after our vendors. Seems to me that you really have started a very comprehensive approach. And uh, what I really liked is what you just said with the play phase and the scale phase. I think that's a very important step that you have taken because you really need to bring the people close to the tools, the people close to the create some awareness about risk management. Heiko, from your point of view, uh, Sam also talked a little bit about risk methods. He talked about um, how technology in general, um, what do you think um, is Technology these days a game changer uh, in in regards to supply chain risk management. 
Absolutely. I'm 100% convinced and I believe even that technology enabled this discipline as such because the power of, of AI, of big ma um, data monitoring, of, of the search power required to do that and the logics to sort out the noise and, and cancel the noise out of the, the vast massive data sets out there is helping professionals to know much, much better the exposure and the potential threats to their supply networks. And mm -hmm. let's scratch a little bit on this uh, under the surface of, of that statement. Um, these insights enable professionals to foster a fast crisis response. That's the reactive part. But also at the same time, those indications that, that Sam also stated is allowing the business to, to be better prepared and to set up preventive capabilities. And with both components, like both sides of the metal, better reaction for the unpredictable shit that hits the fan and the predictive and um, preventive capabilities, um, we help to, to, or technology helps organizations to foster the risk awareness, which is the fundament to make better sourcing decisions, to make and create better um, category strategies, to make better uh, demand bundling uh, decisions, to make better supply chain design decisions as such. And here automation is critical to take away the, the burden of data collection, sorting out the noise and interpretation, and to drive traditional capabilities of, of organizations from reactive to more proactive, mm -hmm. and to release time and, and, and brain power of the experts to really spend on the mitigation part, because it's called supply chain risk management. It's not supply chain risk watching or monitoring, it's called management. So someone has to do something and it ends with the relations with the business partners to drive a change, to drive behavior change. And that is what, what technology can, can facilitate finally. That, that's a perfect, you just stressed the, the term management. Um, uh, Sam, when you think about management, do you have uh, some kind of success stories or some great examples on how you managed uh, risk probably in, in both areas, direct procurement as well as indirect procurement? Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got a couple. Um, the one there's one in Mars we use all the time um, because it was one. It was the first story we stumbled on, and it happened within you know weeks of you know switching on uh, the tool, and that was around um, our gun base supply. So we have we're sole sourced for gun base in, in North America, um, and um, what happened in the you know it was a local local article talked about one of the factories having you know trimming some salaries you know, or capping salaries. And um, they talked about, you know, pausing production. Now, we detected the noise, quickly called the vendor and said, what's going on? They hadn't, you know, the account manager hadn't realized what was going on either. So it was one step ahead, if you like. Then we adjusted our stock target and put some orders through so we could make sure we got the buffer. Mm -hmm. That alone, right? So that was a reactive issue, by the way. But we, but, you know, we should, we could have detected it sooner, maybe. But we, we, act, we reacted really well. Um, and... Yeah, that one issue could have caused you know, significant you know, production issues. We you know, shut, you know, stopping production lines is not an option, um, and put, you know, being able to get ahead of it was was crucial. So that was a nice story there, and we have some others around. Um, we've got a whole, you know, keep a nice log of our stories. Another one indirect around marketing, and we've seen a, quite a few marketing vendors become insolvent. Right, it's the first budget gets cut, <laughs> you know, by major organisations. Um, we had one that, um, you know, in the, new, in the newspaper article announced some you know, financial issues. They were acquired. And guess what? When they got acquired, they got wound, the customer, you know, the book was taken away and the comp company got wound down. And the time between the first article, you know, and then the last was like a week. So things can develop quite quickly. And again, it was just the fact that we could see it. We could then quickly see, right, you know, what demand do we have for that vendor? And then we can notify our stakeholders and just get ahead of it. Super. And um, before we talk a little bit about the future of risk management, what's the next big thing and such, one more question to you, Sam. Um, now that you talked about the success stories, what were the, the biggest learnings from this project, from this, from starting this approach? What what did you uh, what did you learn from 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 the people probably? What did you learn from the use of the tools? Uh, 
number one learning and this is going to be no surprise is data is get it get it good right um the, the ai is fabulous but it will bombard your inbox if you don't make sure you tune it up properly so um and we've had users use the tool and they want it just to be perfect straight away and suddenly they're saying it's just spamming me so i think just getting a good foundation of data really really helps in fact as we've gone in our scale it phase we've been clean up in our spend cube and we've now reused that data Mm. Um, and even better, if you get great data, you can look at like the ship too, right? So which suppliers are shipping what to where, and you can get into into the weeds. Um, but yeah, no surprise there. Get your data sorted. Um, and then the second one, uh, which is a surprise to me, is the behaviors. I thought the tool was going to just do stuff, and we hit a button, and we can you know, for, forward out actions. <laughs> Actually, where we had the most value is when we've had like really smart thinking. Right, an early on signal, you thought, oh, you know what? What happens when someone changes a CFO? Where did that CFO come from? Are they from a hedge fund? Or do they like winding up companies? <laughs> do, do they like restructuring? And we've had a couple of stories like that. And I think they're the ones I enjoy the most. So developing this, this curiosity, um, developing the behavior to listen to a risk and think three, three or four steps ahead and take one or two small actions. I think that's, for me, the biggest learning and most surprise to me. So basically, also to answer one of the questions that we already have received, uh, the agility within your team, has that increased or uh, did you have to do something to increase the agility also in the mindset of the people that probably cost is not target number one, but that we probably have to shift our focus on other topics as well? Yeah, and I'm not going to pretend we're, we're perfect at it. I'm not going <laughs> to, I know there's, there's some Martians on the line, on, on the call today. I'm not going to pretend that we've got this dream solution within six months of scaled and it's working perfectly. Um, what I want to go from is one in 10 user who really gets it and, um, and inspires us to two to three out of 10 of those users who can go, yeah, actually, I'm just going to embed this in my daily way of working. So I think we've got more work to do on that, that change management side. Okay. And, um, Probably before we, we come to some of the questions, Heiko, you're, uh, you're dealing with risk management now for many, many years. So enlighten us. What is the future? Tell us. <laughs> what is the next big thing in risk management? Um, let me start with the challenge. I think um, most of the companies out there, they start to realize that um, competition and competitive edge is driven by the performance of the supply networks. Mm. And... Understanding the supply networks is a precondition to operate them in an ideal and, and high efficient manner. And this is where transparency is lacking today. Um, it already starts with tier two visibility and even below. And this is where we just recently launched also a new product to support enterprises, companies of any size literally, to better understand the um, tier two structures and also answering a question that is not even raised as of today in the market, how to make these folks more resilient because the weakest link of the supply chain is the one that is going to break, right? So just getting transparency and, and getting some edge by getting informed earlier, having understanding bottleneck situations that are hidden in tier two, et cetera, is one part of getting more resilient. But the even more challenging part is how to make my business partner and enable them to become more resilient because I don't want to manage the mess in tier three, right? It should be the business of my, my suppliers. And um, we are addressing these two facets of driving resilience for the entire network. And I think this is going to be the next big thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's an interesting future. And I think the biggest challenge right now really is to create the supply chain transparency, not only with your tier one suppliers, but also the tier two, tier three suppliers. Also in regards of all the new legislations coming up in Germany, we have now this so-called Liefergesetz, uh, Lieferkettengesetz, the German Supply Supplier Due Diligence Act. And you see that in more and more countries coming up. And I think this is where we as procurement professionals really need digital support not to get swamped with all the administrative efforts with all that paperwork and i think uh, what you just outlined heiko is, is very important also to keeping it operational um before we close this uh, short discussion i would like to address one or two questions mainly to sam um first question that's coming from the audience was uh, based on the system can you predict upcoming risks 
predict upcoming risk, not on alone. So, so one thing we've done, and it's really, it's been a bit of a, an interesting journey, is combine this data with our internal data. So we've got an API for, you know, with, with risk methods, it goes to, the data goes into our lake, and then we start looking at quality defects plus the, 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 uh, the alerts. That's been fascinating <laughs> because sometimes stuff correlates, right? So yeah, um, but does it let you predict? I still think it's starting to be quite reactive. So would it be great if you see an external alert and then a week later you see a quality defect? Um, I don't think we've stepped up, up, up enough there. I would love to yeah, get deeper in that, in that project. Now we've wired it up, let's get into the analytics. But I, I can't think of anywhere. I think it's mainly about reacting really, really quickly and maybe picking up faint signals that might develop into something, you know, a, a bigger issue later. Very good, thank you very much. And um, probably uh, one last question. Um, you were just talking about potential insolvencies, about financial trouble with your suppliers. Have you used other supply chain finance instruments uh, to support your suppliers to keep them alive? Yeah, so we have, uh, Miles already has probably the biggest, one of the biggest supply chain financing programs of our peer group. So we have a good, good chunk of our spend going through it. Um, so already we're pretty healthy on there. We also have a pretty good view who SMEs are. And, and then we, we have a policy to support with 30 or 60 days um, on, on with preferential terms. There are some vendors in some regions where we don't have supply financing, but again, if they're critical, we don't, we're able to practically contact them and make sure we can support them. I was hoping that risk methods will get a bunch of alerts saying vendor going insolvent, et cetera. Funny enough, it doesn't come up in the news very often. So, so particularly the vendor you never think, you know, we should go. So, so I think uh, the insolvency is still a, a relationship thing, right? Can you look your vendor in the eye and believe them when they say that they're, they're okay, they're stable? And, and make sure you look at the right vendors in their eyes as well, right? Make sure it's those, those vendors that are under the surface that are critical to your, to your business. I'm actually doing another session now, so I'm gonna to have to jump on being All right. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, that's fine. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And also thank you to the audience for all the questions. You will get yeah, answers to your questions. So we have people in the background that will take care of it. And I think it became more than obvious today, listening to Sam and Heiko, that uh, risk management is not just another topic on the procurement agenda, or it's not just a tool or a trend. It's a mandatory task for everyone who wants to professionalize procurement and wants to create something like safe supply chains. And uh, I think we all will know that the challenge that we are currently facing will, will remain. It will not go away in 2022 or 2023. So really take action, enable your organization, build a strong digital ecosystem, because today it became also very obvious that um, the old traditional procurement levers are still important to understand and execute, but we can enhance them with very strong digital tools uh, that are out there that are mature enough to support you. And I think Sam and Heiko provided some great insights how to build that resilience and how to make a supply chain risk management program effective. Uh, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Heiko. Thank you to the audience again and enjoy your, the rest of your conference. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, -bye. thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Thanks to both Thank of you, you and all the attendees. Bye. Thank you. Bye.